This video is based on the teachings of Billy Meyer. This presentation is an attempt to share my understanding of Billy's teaching based on my own experiences and inner journey towards the truth. My intention is not to convince you to believe in something, but to inspire you to directly experience your own inner world. The life of human beings could be compared to a tree. The trunk, the branches, and the leaves represent the external realm of life. Our upbringing by our parents, our education, our personal relationships, and the decisions we make during our life. The roots of the tree represent our inner realm of consciousness, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our character, and our morality. When the external growth and the internal growth of the tree are in balance, the tree is firmly rooted and can withstand storms. When an imbalance emerges, such as rapid growth of the trunk and branches, without the corresponding growth of the roots, the tree is toppled in stormy weather because the roots were too shallow and couldn't support the top-heavy tree. Symbolically, the tree represents our life. The tree trunk and branches represent our external, material life and the root system represents the inner life of our consciousness. It is the inner life of our conscious thinking that has been neglected from a lack of thinking for ourselves. Today, much of our thinking is done for us by radio, television, and the internet. In most cases, people no longer need to think for themselves because the thinking has already been done for them. They simply accept whatever they see and read and align their thoughts and beliefs accordingly. Not thinking is much simpler and more comfortable because the individual does not need to be responsible for their own thoughts and actions. This leads to a weakening of the consciousness and as a result leads to stagnation and the inability to deal with life's burdens. The consciousness does not think by itself. Thinking is produced in the consciousness by each individual person and is the primary force that creates our path through life. Thinking produces every condition and every circumstance in life. Therefore, each human being's personality and character becomes an exacting sum of their thoughts. Joy, sorrow, love, and hate, and all other conditions come solely from the thinker and no one else. And through thinking, 
each person becomes a product of their thoughts. Thoughts don't only emerge from inner stimuli. Thoughts also form in the consciousness as a result of external perceptions. Thoughts are formed from various factors such as ideas and views, as well as wishes and desires. Thoughts are also formed from experiences and situations in life that trigger emotional impulses which lead to new thoughts based on the emotion. Thoughts need to be controlled during their formation and steered in such a way that the thoughts become healthy and balanced instead of uncontrolled and negative. The strengthening of our consciousness can only take place through conscious thinking and not by letting our thoughts just drift, unchecked and unaware. Each human being must learn to observe and control their thinking. Thoughts cannot be changed by talking or by listening or by reading books. Thoughts can only be changed through understanding the thoughts by searching and seeking how and why particular thoughts arise. Try asking yourself, why did I just think that? Or, where did this thought come from? Try and find the reason for your thinking. This analytical process, this questioning of how and why your thoughts arose, will provide you an opportunity to understand and experience your own inner thinking process. Both good and evil are formed through the power of thinking. Through a very specific type of thinking, a will is formed. The will, according to how we think, carries out the good or the evil. will is formed by thinking. And the will can be built up through more thinking, which eventually leads to an action being taken. In other words, thinking sets the will into activity and on its course. All human beings evolve themselves according to their own free will without any intervention from creation. All human beings are equipped with a free will and absolute freedom of action and are able to determine their own path of life and evolution themselves. Billy describes two types of will. Free will and bound will. Bound will 
is not self-created and serves material purposes. The bound will is determined through life circumstances, the norms of society, laws and ordinances, requirements placed on us, and the wishes, dreams, and expectations from our fellow human beings. The bound will affects us through external, material influences, which suppress our own free will. This is why people assume they don't have free will, because their free will is suppressed by the bound will of the material world. If we live by only following our bound will, then we do not consciously determine our destiny. Instead, we let our destiny be determined by material, external influences and let ourselves be guided by the bound will. Free will is something different. The laws and recommendations of creation do not determine what we as human beings must do or must not do. If this was the case, we would not have free will because we would have to do this or have to do that and we would be controlled by the laws. On the contrary, the laws and recommendations of creation do not determine our thoughts, feelings, emotions, or actions. Each individual person has the ability to decide in every respect about following the laws and recommendations of creation or not. In other words, through our own free will. What is provided by the laws and recommendations of creation is that certain causes bring about certain effects. Every thought, every feeling, and every action is a cause which brings about an effect. Each individual human being through their own free will, can create causes in a right or wrong way, or in a negative or positive way, which brings about, as an effect, something negative or something positive. The laws of a just society can serve as an example. Each individual person, through their own free will, can decide whether to follow the laws or not. Following the laws creates a positive effect, such as fairness, righteousness, and responsibility. Disregarding the laws creates a negative effect and brings about punishment, fines, and even jail. Each human being, through their own free will, can determine for themselves if they want to follow the laws of society or not.
This is the same for the laws and recommendations of creation. Each person decides for themselves, through their own free will, if they will follow the laws or not. Another reason why some people are not able to recognize their free will is because of the burdens of our thinking, feelings, emotions, and actions. Our thoughts, feelings, and emotions can be so overwhelming that they hide our free will and make it almost inaccessible. We are unable to analyze or even recognize our own free will, which makes it appear that we don't have a free will. Every human being carries within themselves a creation-given spirit form, which is actually a small piece of creation energy. This creation energy animates our entire body and consciousness and provides the opportunity for self-development through our own free will. The evolution of each person's consciousness slowly grows over their lifetime according to the deliberate efforts put forth by each person and according to their own free will. The developmental process of conscious evolution makes free will recognizable. And through this process, we slowly mature and our differentiation and discernment abilities grow, which leads us to becoming more conscious and more secure in following a distinct path. The energy and power of free will is provided to us at birth and is fundamentally neutral and therefore lies dormant awaiting to be used. Because free will is fundamentally neutral, it can be molded and shaped so that each person can determine the form and nature of their free will. Each person can build up and shape their own free will and determine everything in life themselves. Each person can also let their worldly environment and their fellow human beings impose the bound will on them. Therefore, each individual person, through their own free will, creates negative or positive circumstances in life. Each individual person can also developmentally change their destiny in life through their own free will. As each individual becomes more conscious and exercises their own free will. Their individuality will also grow and form itself in accordance with their own inner nature. Each person is the master of their own destiny. <laughs>